check one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. What the hell? This is being a douche. We're gonna be a douche. But bonjour, welcome to uh, another episode of the Johnny R podcast. Three this week. Very lucky. Three podcasts in one week. Very high for me. Just thought I'd get in a little more practice since I'm not not good at this yet. <clears throat> but I'm having fun with it. It says I had nine listens on this one so far. Or the the previous episode. <clears throat> so that's pretty cool. But as for uh, the happenings around here, around the Red Lake Nation, none that I know of because I just mind my own business, stay close to home, go to work, raise my kids, uh, except for right now they're, they're visiting, so that's why uh, I get a, a free <clears throat> a free evening. One thing I forgot to mention last time was, you know, as you may or may not know, I'm, uh, me and uh, Rob Fairbanks produced a, a, uh, documentary, and we also star in it, which sounds pretty badass to say, starring in a movie, but, um, it's called Res Comedy Documentary, and you can find that on, uh, Facebook or, uh, Kickstarter, Seed and Spark. Um, I don't. That's the only things we have right now, cause we weren't sure when it was coming out, or if it would come out. But let me assure you, I met with uh, our producer on Sunday. No, sat. Was that Sunday? Saturday. Sat last Saturday, and um, he showed me what he had, and uh, it got to a point where. Not all of it was uh, moved onto his his uh, current computer, laptop. So I got to see the first 20 minutes of it, and I was I was moved by by what I saw so far. You know, I was kind of uh, kind of doubted anything would come of it because I haven't heard from him. And uh, I finally got to see it. I got a glimpse, and I'll be able to get to see the rest of it. I think on Sunday. So. If uh, it, it's 83 minutes long, and I saw, I think, maybe 20, 23 minutes of it. So, got another hour of it to watch. So, I'm pretty excited about that. But it's, I always thought I'd be able to take all the info, you know, all the, all the footage, if uh, it didn't work out with him. But now that I saw everything that needs to go into it, that's way over my head. You know, I did DVDs, produced my own stuff uh, about 10 years ago. And I was just uploaded to laptop, the MacBook, and go to iMovies, pff, chop it up. And, well, it was easy, but it, it was a lengthy process. But now it's an even more lengthy process, along with even more sophisticated equipment. And I don't have time to learn how to use... Uh, use um i think it's adobe some kind of adobe program that uh was being used so i'll let him finish that you know i just wanted to make sure it was actually there i wanted to make sure we had something to uh hopefully submit to sundance uh but if not we're just gonna go we're gonna go the uh, independent route anyway um and uh, show the world, show the world what we have, show the stories of uh, fellow native comedians like um, Casey Nicholson and Sheldon Starr, Tony Joe Hall, Von Eagle Bear, Jim Rule, among others. So that will be coming out. But if we do get it into submit to Sundance in time, I think submissions are until uh, through September. So. We got a little bit, another month or so, 
to uh, submit it. But if it does get accepted into Sundance, we won't be able to show anybody because the world premiere has to be at the Sundance Film Festival if it's accepted. Because um, I'm not a movie expert, but I do watch a lot of movies. So I believe this will be accepted. It is what I saw was that good. I know, I know I'm kind of uh, biased because I'm in it, you know. But uh, I think it's really good what what I saw so far. And right now, we just need the 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 score, the music behind the you know the background. That'll really bring out more of a uh, more of a uh, uh, a feel, so we can get emotionally involved in this and. You know what? What I've seen, I was really moved. You know, uh, one of the comedians was, uh, you know, said very nice things about me, and and uh, I never considered myself a, a real comedian. But, but the the guy who said it was really made me feel like I was I was doing it right, doing what what I'm supposed to be doing as a as a uh, I don't know, up, not up and coming, but. I'm nine years in now, so I'm not up and coming anymore. But you know, doing things the right way. We'll say that. Open mics and all that, and doing shit for free just to get my name out there. And so yeah, that. So res res. I can't even talk. I'm so moved. I'm just kidding. But res comedy documentary is coming out. It is uh, finished. We just need to put the music in, and then we'll submit to Sundance, and then we'll premiere at Sundance, and then we'll win a big bunch of awards, and then we'll put into other uh, film festivals, and then we'll win those awards, and then 2020 we'll come back and probably be at the uh, nominated for um, Golden Globes and uh, uh, Independent Spirit Awards and uh, Oscars. Which is the main goal? Well, actually, the main goal is to, you know, get get a spotlight on our native comedians out there. That's the main thing. You know, we're out here, man. Book us, even though I'm not booked like uh, I thought I would be. So it's been tough to be booked around here. I got, I noticed that uh, the Red Lake Nation has a uh, urban picnic in September, and uh, they chose to uh, book a comedian from another tribe. Which isn't the first time that's happened. It happens quite often in the last, uh, I think, last four or five years. I've done, I think, three or four tribal events. Yep, their own uh, Red Lake comedian isn't booked for uh, tribal events on the Red Lake Nation. But whatever, you know, I can uh, find work elsewhere. I can, uh, you know. The other tribes like Leech Lake and White Earth and you know they're they're open to me they they've uh, they've been good to me the last few years so I can't complain about that <clears throat> but you know it's I don't feel I've gotten the um, the push or the encouragement from my own tribe um, maybe it's just me but I've I've always thought that it's been like that for me because I'm always always in the background I'm not really I don't know, maybe I am. Look at me, look at me, look at me. I'm doing a podcast, look at me. Somebody, no, but I usually don't think I'm that way, so I don't know what it is. I don't know what I'm bitching about then. If I don't want to be out front, everybody looking at me. That's weird, right? I don't know. I don't understand it. I don't know what I'm talking about, but even when I got on TV, I didn't see anything from, uh, you know, any of our... um, public relations you know nothing was put out about my TV appearance or um, when I went to Hollywood or you know when I when we started our res documentary when we first left we got in the Bemidji Pioneer but there was nothing uh, nothing really about about uh, what I'm doing I don't know. Maybe that'll change when I'm chairman. So, because I'll, I'll book myself for everything, you know. I'll be uh, like what uh, Kim Jong Un does, you know, the greatest athlete. I'll just put my name in record books, and maybe I'll do that. But I don't know. 
that's quite a way, quite a bit of ways. But if this Res Comedy documentary does work out, 2019 will be the year of John, the Johnny R. 2019, Johnny R. 2019 is my year. It will be my year. But then I think, oh, shit, man, I'm getting getting a little long in the tooth, you know. Next year I'll be 43 years old, and that's really uh, it's really late to be trying to trying to be a movie star, you know, comedian. But maybe I'll move into the uh, pro producer producer role. I'll uh, bring up younger people, help them get to where I wanted to be, but I can't. I don't know. Maybe I will get there. But it take a lot of work, a lot of time away from home. Hopefully, uh, it all works out. You know. Hopefully, this will. This will. Uh, this will. Something will come of it. All uh, my uh, hours and days, weeks away from home, working for free, driving all those miles for sometimes three minutes of stage time. I've done three minutes and came home, which is, uh, now, that, now that I look at it, it was kind of stupid because, you know, I got a family at home. What am I doing traveling 500 miles round trip for three minutes, three minutes of stage time? Stupid. I don't do that anymore, so I feel like I'm at a point now where I should be paid for it. You know, I should be paid well. Sometimes I am, sometimes I'm not, but, you know, it all kind of evens out. It's the business, though, man. That's the business. It's the life I chose. But, uh, it makes you think what's really, what's really out there for us as Red Lakers, as Native Americans. You know, do we even matter to people who who are in control? You know, because we don't have any money, we can't contribute any anything to their pockets. But I've been trying to uh, uh, get rid of us for 500 years, but we're still here. So probably be here longer than they are. So when they're gone, we'll still be here. I don't know. I don't know where I was getting. I don't know where I was going with that. I, I felt all uh, felt all uh, chief about that one. Maybe it got a little out of hand, but I don't know. Just thinking about where I'm trying to get in life. I just want to be comfortable. I want. I want to have a uh, raise raise decent kids that contribute. And not just sit around and, you know, have shit handed to them. They think they're going to get sh shit handed to them. But, you know, it's kind of tough. It's kind of tough, man. But it'll be done. What else is there to talk about? I'm just so sick of Donald Trump. I don't know what... Yeah, he's... He's delivered on his uh, promise to to uh, boost the economy, but at what price? Everything else, he looks stupid. If you notice, on every every time he endorses a candidate on Twitter, same thing. Tough on crime, tough on borders. Loves our vets and the Second Amendment. Well, we all do, right? Second Amendment. Second Amendment is right to bear arms, not necessarily guns. You know, I learned all this from watching um, uh, Colbert and um, The Daily Show. That's my main, my main. I don't really watch TV regularly, but that's what I do watch now. Colbert and Trevor Noah. And I read a lot on Twitter, you know, the Washington Post and... Uh, was it the Wall Street Journal or New York Times? One of those. I was waiting for that story that, that's coming out on um, uh, Les Moonves. Is that his name? Headman at CBS, married to Julie Chen. 
I have all this useless information. I don't know. Maybe it'll maybe it'll all pay off one day. All this useless useless information. I could have swore I was going to be on Jeopardy one of these days, but I tried to do one of them tests, and I bombed. Well, I had kids running around too while I was trying to do the test. So, but maybe I'll maybe I'll get there after my res comedy documentary comes out and sweeps all the awards and turns me into a uh, Judd Apatow of Native American comedy. Speaking of which, I gotta write my shit, man. I gotta, you know, I don't, I still have my material to write because I'm gonna start over. I'm gonna start over on my uh, material. Retire what I've had the last few years for, from uh, when I started. I usually use a lot of those when I go into new crowds and they, they work, they still work, but maybe it's time to get something else. But the only time I was I, I was able to write new stuff was when the uh, Seven Clans comedy jam came up. Once I got word, and that's when the, the, the creative juices start flowing. Seven Clans was my, the, the comedy jam was my WrestleMania. My Super Bowl, but I don't have that anymore. So maybe I'll, I'll find another way to be inspired to write new stuff. But I went to Minneapolis Monday, well, actually Sunday night. Helped the uh, firstborn go look for a new apartment. Um, and while down there, I got a haircut, a really cool haircut. Even my wife was impressed. Usually I get my haircut at Walmart, and they just you know, do the bare minimum. But I got this haircut at, uh, uh, I forgot what it's called. I don't know if you've been to the, uh, Rosedale Mall in Roseville, Minnesota, but it's, uh, across from where the food court used to be. That's where I got my haircut. And they line my sides up really nice. You know, they, they're a straight line. And, uh, even the top, my, my hairline on top was fixed pretty nice. It feels kind of fuzzy because they, took some off and even out my hairline even in the back it looks cool and my wife even complimented me said it was my my neatest haircut I've ever had so so that's where I'm gonna go for haircuts from now on all the way to Roseville Minnesota so I recommend highly recommend that place. I don't know what it's called maybe you can google it google uh, Roseville Rosedale Center haircut place I don't know I, I, there's a sports theme to it and uh, the guys have like um, toolboxes for all their all their uh, haircut equipment. But what else is I, I'm gonna start writing shit down. I really need to write stuff down so I can read it, so I know what I'm talking about. Cause right now I'm just mumbling, killing time. Oh, I was gonna. Uh, I don't know if you've seen the the video I did about uh, Rick uh, Daryl Siki. Uh, doing the Ric Flair woo and I did a video about that I told him only I should be able to woo because I'm the biggest Ric Flair fan ever and I took offense to him wooing after his speeches so I called him out challenged him in uh, 2022 so I'm running for chairman in 2022 if I'm not a rich well not rich but if I'm not a uh, world famous movie producer I will be back to uh, challenge him him and Buck Jordan or whoever else wants to run for chairman in four years so but I, I, I put a Facebook post out claiming I was booked to provide entertainment for the inauguration for when the chairman secretary and treasurer and the new uh, representatives are sworn in they usually have make a big deal out of that so I put the post up about that I was going to be the entertainment. And on the bottom I put. I'm not really booked. I'm just trying to get that rumor out there. So maybe it will happen. Because motherfuckers don't book me for shit around here. So. You know if you. Uh, want something to happen. You got to make it happen. You got to will it to happen. So I'm going to say. I am providing the entertainment. For um, the inauguration. August 14th. And I'm going to send some emails maybe tonight or tomorrow. 
um, inquiring about that. But I don't know why I wasn't booked for uh, the travel picnic in Minneapolis, Red Lake Nation. They're, they're, they're shunning me. Maybe, uh, maybe I'm not funny enough because I did the Christmas dinner and they put me on at the worst possible time. They were telling me, okay, well, here comes uh, our entertainment uh, from Red Lake, uh, John Roberts. And before he comes on, just let you know, uh, food is ready. So if you want to get in line and uh, listen to the comedian. That was the worst fucking time to put a comedian on stage when the whole crowd is getting out of their tables, going to the food line. And uh, ugh, that was no excuse. You know, I did my <laughs> 45 minutes of eating poop because nobody was paying attention, nobody was listening, and there were kids running around behind me, but I was a professional. Did my 45 minutes, got paid and left. And it wasn't even, uh, uh, my usual pay that I've been getting so but you know whatever if they give me the chance again I don't think they want to give me a chance because I remember when I did a um, I was the, the moderator of a um, election uh, what is that called when all the candidates and they mentioned my name. So they're, they're saying, well, I don't think he's the kind of person that we should have because, you know, it's because of my jokes, man. It's because of what I said. Maybe I'm maybe I'm the most dangerous man with a mic in Red Lake. Maybe that's why I'm not booked for anything. But I don't say anything offensive. You know, I, I, like I've said before, you know, I made fun of the uh, council name. But it wasn't good fun, man. I wasn't trying to be malicious or asshole about it. It was funny, man. That's... That's how we, we've survived 500 years of bullshit and assimilation and all that. We laugh. We laugh at the most unfortunate times. It's got us very far in life. And if I go up the inauguration, I'm just going to have fun. You know, I'm not going to be an asshole, be mean and, you know, get in trouble probably. I'm not going to do that, but... Hopefully they, they give me a chance. The, the only full-blooded Ojibwe comedian working today. Full-blooded Ojibwe comedian. I'm the one of a kind. I'm the lone wolf. Or maybe are there, there are other full-blooded Ojibwe's. I say I'm full-blooded because uh, my grandma and grandpa on my dad's side were full-blood Red Lakers. And uh, my grandma on my mom's side was a full blood Red Laker. And my mom's. Wait. My grandpa on my mom's side is a full blooded white earth Ojibwe. So. I'm three quarters according to the government. But with that quarter white earth, I am a full blood. Right? That's how it works. Right? That's how the. Yeah. See, I figured probably the only full blooded Ojibwe comedian working today. So. I got that going for me, but nobody cares. Nobody wants to. People ask me um, to explain my comedy, and I, I really can't. It's just uh, I make fun of uh, whatever comes to mind. You know, most comedians sit down, you know, and just write, write whatever, you know, they have an idea of what they're going to write about. and you know, writing sessions, I can't do that, you know, it, the stuff that I have just came to me, or, you know, I've experienced things, experienced most of my jokes, you know, I embellish on them a little bit, but, you know, the, that stuff still happens to me, or else, yeah, that's pretty much, that sums it up, I don't, I don't sit down and have writing sessions with anybody or by myself, it just, Whatever pops up in my head, whatever I can remember, or something funny that happens, I write it down or I put it in my phone for later. It's pretty much what it is. It's pretty much how how I've done comedy. But if I had to sit down, 
if I got hired as a writer and had to come up with skits just just like that, I couldn't do it because, you know, I, well, maybe I could go off uh, my life experiences, but I can't just throw out ideas at the top of my head that come out of nowhere, but I have to experience something before I can write. But not just my comedy, I got boring. The thing about comedy is I hate traveling, but I like being out there. You know, I don't like to be gone for too long, but uh, the stories I have, they're not really rock and roll, rock and roll drunken ragers, because I'm old, older now and it takes me forever to snap out of it. If I get drunk, like I usually do, I'm useless for the next few days, so I can't do that anymore. Probably uh, threw my life away if I was younger and did comedy. I'd probably be dead if I didn't have a wife and kids. And I was just, if I started comedy at 18 years old, even though I keep telling myself I should have started younger. But I was too dumb, too reckless. So, you have a good head on your shoulders. But then they say the most uh, brilliant comedians have uh, rough lives that they try to uh, try to share and that's where most of their most of their jokes come from pain that they've had growing up in life but when I grew up I went through some painful situations and but somehow I I don't really I don't really uh, I'm not sentimental I don't get attached now that I'm older, I don't even think I was like that when I was younger. I mean, the only people that were really close to me that, I, that died were my uh, my grandpa Shorty. He died in 1987. He got killed driving, but he was hit by a drunk driver. July 3rd, 1987. And uh, my Uncle Joe... He had complications from diabetes and a, uh, a kidney transplant. He died August 7th, I think, 2002. And uh, my closest friend that died was Marcella Roy. She died, I think it was March of 2000. No, was it March? 2014. You know, I don't, I don't know what it is. I, I don't get... I don't open up to many people. It's uh, you know, it's nothing personal. It's just, it's just the way I am. You know, just it's just uh, pretty much my wife and kids right now, and I don't, I don't really see myself opening up to be, you know, I see it as being vulnerable. You know, you give somebody a, a shot to give them ammunition. They could possibly use at a later date. Uh, you know, even though I've been stupid and drunk, people still have that on me. But, and I hate that. That kills me, people. People still bring stuff up about the way I used to be. That's why I don't uh, let motherfuckers in anymore, you know? I don't even want to go anywhere sometimes. I don't even like going to the store. I go to work, I come home. It's pretty much, I don't like going to movies, I don't like, uh, I don't know what it is, it's the old age, crabby old man, that's what it is, crabitis, is that a real disease or did I just make that up, but, some wrong with me, I tried to do therapy, but I didn't like it, I don't like sharing, opening up sharing. But I do on Twitter, so if you're on my Twitter, you see a lot of shit nobody else has seen about me. Maybe I shouldn't tell you to go to Twitter. Because a lot of people are getting fired because of their Twitter posts from 10 years ago. That's going to be me. If I become chairman, uh, people are going to go back on my Twitter and find, you know, all of my online online life. It's not pretty, you know. You know when they do that, it's like they don't allow people think people can uh, change from that learn from those mistakes but you know whatever whatevs shit man I went 
a long time here. And did it quit recording? Motherfucker, quit record. Oh, I hate technology. That's all I got. Fuck.